This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. It is the sleepless day after the election, Wednesday, November 9th. I am joined by Arkansas Democrat Gazette columnist John Brummett. Remembered my name. I did. Well, I'm, I'm a little low on sleep. Yeah, I've yeah. had as many as cups of coffee and Cokes as I've had hours of sleep, so it's a lot. Trust me. Never mind. Yeah, you, yeah. I know what you're trying to say. You know what I'm say. trying to say. Yeah. All right, John. Uh, we have been talking for weeks, months, years about this election uh, that, that's come up here. Here are a couple of descriptions from what I've heard from the outcome of uh, Donald Trump defeating Hillary Clinton yesterday that uh, we put the bull in the China shop. Uh, <laughs> we gave a middle finger to Washington, D.C. And then my favorite is uh, Bud Cummins, the state party uh, chairman for the Trump campaign, gives this quote out right here. People have been saying my whole lifetime that they wanted a candidate that wasn't beholden to special interests, so here you go. Yeah. Bullworth come to life. It, oh, where does this rank in your greatest hits? Well, right at the top. Uh, <laughs> Bud is basically saying, you're the dog who finally caught the car. Now what you gonna do? I mean, you, you wanted this, you say, uh, here he is. This is, uh, it's, we, it's, it's, what's the word for it? It is, it is, <laughs> It is almost unfathomable to see this guy as the president, to put him inside the Oval Office and give him an Oval Office address, to see him every morning, to me, I mean, to, to 50 some odd million Americans, it seemed fathomable. Uh, getting the very intricate and, and classified and, and, and important uh, intelligence briefings every morning. Uh, he said he was not going to pay attention to those, remember? Well, you know, the guy who did his, who wrote his, uh, wrote his autobiography, uh, which is an oxymoron, said that uh, he couldn't get him to sit still long enough to tell him anything about his life. He seems to have a short attention span. We'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah. it's, uh, There'll it's, be a Trump presidential library somewhere someday. Mm -hmm. I suspect in Trump Tower. But <laughs> we bigger, don't bigger place for it. <laughs> Um, all right, so we have talked for a number of weeks leading up here. He had to really thread a needle to get the mm -hmm. electoral votes that he did. He had to win the red toss-up states that were competitive. He had to win the blue toss-up states that he got, I think, all but one of that were uh, Obama states that could go either way. And then he had to pull some blue states out and make them red, which he did. Um, what is the Trump coalition? We've talked a lot about the Obama coalition. What's the Trump coalition? The Trump coalition is consists of the following. Republicans who, who went home at the end. Uh, I, I spent the entire election explaining to people that Trump was not gonna get the Romney-McCain vote because moderate Republicans, suburban Republican women couldn't see him as president and weren't gonna support him. In the end, it appears they all said, okay, I'm gonna go. So, so it starts with that. You get him to, the, to a percentage, basically, that McCain and Romney got, add to it, white, working class, non-college educated people, disaffected, angry, people who are, are mad at uh, everybody and everything, and who principally populate the states he took. The Rust Belt states up there. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin, Michigan. We thought he would take Ohio and Hillary would take the other three. But all the polls showed that was what conventional yeah, wisdom they said. They were led in a poll, I think, And uh, he took them all. Uh, all, all four. So that, that's it. He, he's, it's, it's, it's keeping Republicans at home and then adding what they used to call them Reagan Democrats, then Clinton got them back, but now they're even stronger than ever in a force because of, of, of the resentment of trade, the resentment of globalization of the economy, the resentment of an economy that's, uh, and, and a Democratic Party I think that's become kind of elitist, affiliated with Wall Street, representing the things about Washington and the, and, the, and, and the economy that they don't like. So that's that's the Trump coalition, and it worked. Let's talk about what he does as president. Um, he's talked about building a wall in front of Mexico. He's talked about immigration. He's talked about Muslim deportation. He's talked about a special prosecutor for Hillary Clinton. He is talking about ripping up trade agreements and starting over. He's talked about redefining NATO. What's he realistically going to do? Do you think does he have to do some of those things? Roby, who can say? We, we've <laughs> never encountered anything like this. It's. Uh, I think he has to. 
I, I did a piece for your magazine of Arkansas, early Arkansas supporters of Trump, and I said, does he have to build a wall? No, but he sure better try. You know, he, he's got to have, give some attention to, <coughs> to an effort. I think of that litany you just mentioned, uh, I do think he can and will uh, tell Mexico and Canada uh, NAFTA's dead in six months and we're going to renegotiate. I think, and I think that might not be a bad thing yeah. if we get to, uh, but that's the one that I think is doable and makes sense in response to his electorate. The rest of it, I, I just, I, I don't think Mrs. Clinton is going to be, uh, going to get a special prosecutor and be thrown in jail as he vowed in one of his debate performances. And as many of his supporters would prefer. Right. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Just before we go to break, though, I want you to know you've written harshly about Donald Trump Am and I? probably will continue, but I want you to think of this as column fodder. You have job security for the next four years. Really? Have you thought about it like this? No, I've thought that it's just not safe for me to, uh, <laughs> to go out. Uh, what's the job security? You're going to get to write. Donald Trump is going to give you a treasure trove of things to write about. You will never have a shortage of ideas for a column. Not that you ever do. All right. We're going to be back with John Bryant with more right after this. First Security is here. Only here. So that means we're here. Here. And here. Even here. And definitely here. Because here is where we want to be for you. First Security Bank, only in Arkansas. And welcome back. I'm Roby Brock with Talk Business and Politics Daily. We're joined by John Brummett with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Let's talk about issue six, the medical marijuana mm -hmm. amendment passed, turns out, by about a seven-point margin there. Still pretty close. It was a neck-and-neck neck thing. It was the tightest of all of the four uh, issues. Are you having back pain yet? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, tomorrow's column closes by saying that it's mostly about Trump's presidency, but it said we got medical marijuana in Arkansas just in the nick of time. <laughs> so I try to tie those two <laughs> issues together. I've had back pain, but I don't need any particular uh, 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 new dose of uh, medication. I don't think we're moment. surprised that no. medical marijuana passed. I think we kind of expected that it had a good chance to, uh, for passage there. I didn't think it'd be a landslide, and I don't think that it was. It was a solid win, 53-5 yeah. to 46-5 or 53-47. Yeah. I've been told that we, we are now alone in our region among bordering states in offering or having uh, a medical marijuana and that this becomes a growth industry for the state. We become a destination for folks who want to go get the relief and we could see the emergence of, of uh, medical center spas here that are tied to doctors who will give the letters for, and it, honestly, somebody said mm -hmm. this this will probably do more for Arkansas's economic development than issue three. I have and been it's, saying it's, that it's for possible. Weeks. It's yeah. possible. I mean, I've been saying that for quite some time because it is going to create a new industry in Arkansas. The legislature, like they did with the lottery, although this is going to be much bigger, mm -hmm. has got to figure out how to implement a plan of cultivation, distribution, regulation, and everything that All goes that with it. that is generally it. laid out in the amendment, but it has to be it has to be imposed. Uh, uh, in a legislative way, administratively. But that was the first I'd really thought about this being an economic uh, uh, growth engine. And, and it really is, I, when I've, you think about it. Yeah, and I've said for quite a while that it will be the, out, out of all the issues, the ballot issues, that one had the most to do more impact in the economy, whether you supported it or didn't. All right, uh, we saw huge early voter turnout here right. in Arkansas. I think if my calculations are close to accurate, Almost 58 percent of the total voter turnout mm -hmm. comes from early voting and absentee voting, and early voting was way dominant on that. I think that's a one-time thing, or do you think no. maybe this is where people are going to start voting now? Yeah, I think uh, I think voting has now become a season, sort of like Christmas season. It's just something that you get start doing uh, mid-October, and uh, people are as apt to do it early as on election day. There will be traditionalists. It'll be like the newspaper industry. Uh, there'll be some people who will insist, thank God, on that newspaper every morning, and there'll be some people who will insist on the voting day experience. But I think it's incrementally simply going to become more pronounced as a, an early voting exercise that you do over a period of days. Maybe someday we can even we can even get it done digitally, and you can just send your vote in somewhere. They do that in Oregon, right? Yeah. So uh, you trust that? Come on now. It could be a rigged election if that's the case. Well. 
I wouldn't uh, want to do it until we could verify it, but you're the one who does computerized polling and you swear by it. And your polls look good, by the way. Thank you. Let me say that by, uh, not, not to blow smoke, this is just true. Maybe you're just lucky, but I'm sure you're probably good. <laughs> Pollsters have taken, national pollsters, missed it. Whatever weighting, whatever their da data input formula matrixes, that they didn't work. Right. Uh, but you pretty much, for another election cycle, yeah. You had it pretty much right on. I'll take the pat on the back. I can tell you why they missed that, in particularly in those early, or in those states up in the Rust Belt there, is Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania don't have early voting. When we started seeing that surge down here in Arkansas, I started making some calls around to find out, is this happening in other states? And it was. You can't poll unlikely voters. And I think that when we look at the data, in the when this all settles, I think we're going to see there was a big turnout of people that maybe vote in one of the last well, four the, elections, I, zero. first question, what poll, is the Trump so. coalition? And, and I mentioned the white, <laughs> working class, non-college educated voters. They're not regular voters. Right. And they were not unique to this election, maybe, but they don't, uh, they, they, may, they don't meet the usual definition of a likely voter right. for your screening. So yeah, that's what happened. Uh, plainly, that's what I happened. I don't know if you can ever poll <clears throat> those folks, to be honest with you. You're just guessing who's right. going to show up. Right. So. All right, uh, last question here. The state legislature now, because of a switch in party affiliation, uh, Jeff Wardlaw apparently has uh, switched. 75 Republicans in the House, 29 in the Senate. Those are super majorities. That's, yeah. You can do anything at that point in time. Where does the Democratic Party of Arkansas and the Democratic Party nationally where do they go now? I do not know. I've been wondering about that. Uh, I saw a social media post for uh, this morning from uh, Representative Greg Lanning, remaining young Democrat from Fayetteville, who said to, who was telling what he was going to be doing. He said, and then I'll be going down for uh, to Little Rock for a meeting of what's left of my caucus. Uh, traditionally, you could always say if you really want to get something done in the Arkansas legislature because of this supermajority requirement to appropriate most of the money, you could block appropriations for leverage if you wanted to. You could do it tactically. You don't want to do it on important things and, 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 and appear obstructionist, but you could use it. But you can if you're only 25 of you and there are only, what, six in the, in the Senate? You're not even able to, to do that. You're not even uh, to take advantage of a, of a supermajority. The Democratic Party in Arkansas is now wholly pitiable. Just, it just is. It's, uh, I, I mean no offense to any member remaining in the caucus, but you got no teeth. You got, uh, you, you just, and, and Republicans just automatically win, unless it's in a couple of Delta places, Little Rock, Thank or Fayetteville. They just, Republicans automatically win. Excellent candidate, uh, Nate Looney in Jonesboro, beaten, ran a great race, has a, had all the right issues, said all the right things, lost by a couple thousand votes. So that's, that's just as, as overwhelmingly one party democratic as we were. Not that long not ago. Not long ago. We are now at least that much, if not more so, yeah. Republican. Nationally, the Democrats found themselves running at a t in a change election, the very symbol of inside politics in Hillary Clinton. And there was nobody else on the scene except a charming Sanders. old socialist. The, Dem the National Democratic Party is at the moment, and James Carville said this last night, I think, late on television, it's in utter disarray. There's no farm team. There's no obvious candidate. They've lost governorships. They've lost state houses. They've, they've lost now the White House in addition. And they, of course, they didn't achieve the Senate. Well, they end up with 48. Yeah. Uh, so they're, uh, uh, it's a, it's, it's, it's a reckoning time for the Democratic Party, and I don't know what they do and who they do it with. More column fodder, more job security well, for you, John. I'm glad to have, uh, have that. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate you as always. Well, you too. And we appreciate you as always too. Thank you so much for sticking with us through this entire election season. We appreciate all your patronage of our website. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two-thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history, with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members. 
and we want to continue that well into the future. So much of what Arkansas State employees do goes unnoticed, yet they have a positive impact on our citizens each and every day. The Arkansas State Employees Association recognizes individuals for excellence in the workplace and leadership in their communities. Congratulations to Deanna O'Malley of Texarkana, the Outstanding State Employee of 2016. We'd like to say thank you to all state employees for all of your hard work and dedication.